जय राधा माधवा कुंज विहारी जय राधा माधवा कुंज विहारी जय गोपी जनवल गिरी जय गोपी जनवल गिरी वर दी जय सौर नंदन ब्रज जन अंजनाय सौर नंदन ब्रज जन अंजनाय जमुन थीर है भार जमुन थीरा है भार छी जमुन जी झारुंज बिहार कुंज विहारोपी जनब घेरे भारधा गोपी जन बलबाय गोपी जन बलबारे भार जिसोर नंदन ब्रज जन नंदन गज झमुन थीरा झमुन थीरा झम कुंज विहारी वासुदेवाया
reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 15, Instructions for Civilized Human Beings. This is the last chapter in this canto. It's a long chapter. There's 80 verses in this particular. This is verse 31. Desha saucha same rajan Samstapya sanam atmanaha Stiram sukam samam tasmin Asitar janga om iti Deshe sucho same rajan Samstapya sanam atmanaha Stiram sukam samam tasmin Asitar janga om iti Deshe sucho same rajan Samstapya sanam atmana Stiram sukam samam tasmin Asev sar janga om iti They say Sucho Same Rajan Samstapya Sanam Atmanaha Stiram Sukam Samam Tasmin Asitar Janga Omiti Sucho Same Rajan Samstapya Sanam Atmanaha Sidiram Sukam Samam Tasmin Tarsitar Janga Omiti Deshe in a place Sucho very sacred. Same, level, level, Rajan, O King, Stam, Samstapya, placing, Asanam, on the seat, Atmanaha, oneself, Stiram, very steady, Sukam, Comfortably, samam, equipoised, tasmin, on that sitting place, asita, one should sit down, riju anga, the body perpendicularly straight, 
That means like this, you know. Om, the Vedic mantra pranava, iti, in this way. <clears throat> so we're going to get a little description of the yoga system here. My dear king, in a sacred and holy place of pilgrimage, one should select a place in which to perform yoga. The place must be level and not too high or low. There one, there one must sit very comfortably, being steady and equipoise, keeping his body straight, and thus begin chanting the Vedic pranava. Hmm. Okay. Description of how to perform the Astanga yoga system, or at least to begin. Report. Generally, the chanting of Om is recommended because in the beginning one cannot understand the personality of Godhead. As stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam 1 2 11, Vadanti tat tadvad vidyas tadvam gyajyanam avyayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagamaniti sabjite. Learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this nandu substance Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Unless one is fully convinced of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one has the tendency to become an impersonless yogi, searching for the Supreme Lord within the core of the heart. Dhyana vastita tadgatena manasad pasyanti yam yoginaha. Here, the chanting of Omkara is recommended because in the beginning of transcendental realization, instead of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, one may chant Omkar. Okay, you ready? Om. Very good. So that is that's chanting the holy name also. There is no difference between the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and Omkara because both of them are sound representations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Pranava Sarvaveti Shu. In all Vedic literatures, the sound vibration Omkara is the beginning. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. The difference between chanting Omkara and chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra is that the Hare Krishna Mantra may be chanted without consideration of the place or the sitting arrangement recommended in the Bhagavad Gita 611. So cho desha pratishtapya stiram asanam atmanaham nat uchchitam nati nicham chailajina kusotaram to practice yoga, one should go to a secluded, secluded place and should lay kusa grass on the, on the ground and then cover it with a deer skin and a soft cloth. The seat should neither be too high nor too low and should be situated in a sacred place. The, chant, the Hare Krishna mantra may be chanted by anyone without consideration of the place or how one sits. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has openly declared, the Amita Smarane Nakalaha. In chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, there are no particular injunctions regarding one's sitting place. The injunction is Niyamita Smarane Nakalaha, which includes Desha, Kala, and Patra, place, time, and the individual. Therefore, anyone may chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra without consideration of the time and place. Especially in this age, Kali Yuga is very difficult to find a suitable place according to the recommendations of Bhagavad Gita. The Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, however, may be chanted at any place and any time, and this will bring results very quickly. Yet even while chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, one may observe regulative principles, Thus, while sitting and chanting, one should keep his body straight, and this will help one in the chanting process. Otherwise, one may feel sleepy. Om Magyan Timidandasya Ginajana Salakaya 
Chaksu unmilitam yenatas my Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Staptitam Yenabutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Dama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Dear Visesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasiri Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Hmm Yira Prabhupada Ki Jai so, Prabhupada very nicely describes the two processes, there are two ways you can practice the process. Chant, uh, quoting the verse from the Bhagavad Gita, how one should find a sacred place and then sit in a certain level, place deer skin on the ground with a cloth on top of that, sit very erect, and then begin chanting Om. And that this leads to absorption. Yeah, through absorption, it then one can start to think of this is, then you start through asana, and then you go through um, prani, pranayama, pratyahara, dhar, dhana, dharni, dhyana, and ultimately Samadhi. This is the Eightfold Mystic Yoga System, which was practiced in Satya Yuga. In that age, this is, was the recommended means. And people could live up to, well, Valmiki Muni lived 60,000 years, and he perfected the yoga system. And there it says that people, some people would live up to 100,000 years. Because this process really takes a lot of time and endeavor to perfect it. So it's not recommended for this age. <laughs> it's just not. People are manda sumanda matiyo manda bhagi upadritaha, as it says in the Bhagavatam. People are lazy, misguided, unlucky. Uh, what else? Uh, huh? Yeah, that's there. And always disturbed. In other words, there's a, people don't have the qualifications at all to practice the yoga. So even the qualifications to practice spiritual life have to be developed with great endeavor before one can actually perfect any spiritual process. But therefore... And Om, Om is the original sound vibration. You'll find in the third canto, there's a lot of descriptions on the Om and how Om unfolds into everything. A U M is the actual letters of the Om. A stands for Krishna, U stands for Rishimati Radharani, and M is stands for all living entities. So it includes the entire creation within that sound vibration, Om. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. It was Om. <laughs> and so that's the actual manifestation of, the, of all of existence unfolding from these three letters, A, U, and M, put together and chanted <clears throat> with absorption. You might even think, well, you know, chanting Hare Krishna is not so easy, but chanting Om is a lot easier, right? Seems like it. Just like we were just chanting. And we saw how everybody got absorbed quickly and was able to keep it. And I've been to many rainbow gatherings. <laughs> I don't know if you know what a rainbow gathering is, no? You? Anybody? Know what a rainbow gathering is? It's it's a big thing, yeah. They have them in Europe also. <laughs> the hippies <laughs> from all over they congregate in different places throughout the year. Usually, some sacred, some national forest, 
And usually there's sometimes 15 or 20 thousands of them, and then they all come. That's for the national event. <laughs> and they, on the last day, they all get together, and they have this big pole with various deities placed upon it. And everyone gets there and chants, Om. <laughs> I mean, I've been to that, and I've also participated in the chant. And it's, pretty, it's quite powerful. <laughs> Very powerful. And uh, there's some people who are really serious about it, so when they practice it, it has some effect. But um, no one practices it as a means for developing self realization. <clears throat> because actually, it, you know, it requires so many rules and regulations in order to perform it. So what is the rules and regulations for here, for chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which is, home and Hare Krishna is the same, but Prabhupada does make a point in one, in one purport where he says, the personal indication is given in the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, where Om is impersonal. Om doesn't so much designate the individual supreme, Whereas Krishna is actually the name of the Supreme. And so it, it gives indication of the personality of Godhead. So therefore, because we are personalists, you know, we generally follow Lord Chaitanya's teaching and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And uh, Prabhupada does end the purport in saying that one of the requirements, and you hear when Prabhupada chants the Chapa tape, Twice, he says in that tape, sit properly. <laughs> sit properly. <laughs> the first time he says it real strong, and everybody gets shaken up and they all readjust. The second time he says it, and it doesn't have the same reaction. <laughs> but Prabhupada says it twice in the Japa tape, which is, the Japa tape is 37 minutes long, so. Uh, and Prabhupada is saying it's important to keep the back straight because why you feel sleepy. And so that's important when, when you, even if you're sitting in class, if you slouch, if you sit in a very, you're, it's harder to keep concentration. At the beginning, when you first get into the very strict pose, you might think, oh, it's a little difficult. But as soon as you practice it, and you start to get accustomed to it, it becomes more natural. And it's good for the body, too. Because they say the energy of the body has a tendency to flow constantly through the spinal column. And when the spinal column is straight, <laughs> you can use the pole. When the spinal column is straight, then the energy is flowing up and down nicely. And concentration is enhanced like that, so concentration is enhanced. But in other positions and postures, I mean, I've seen devotees look like they're ready to go to sleep when they're chanting, in terms of the positions they get into, you know, like, it's like, where's the pillow, you know? <laughs> so it's, these are the things you want to try to avoid, because it's yoga, and yoga means meditation, and meditation means concentration. And concentration means in, to position the body where it doesn't distract from your ability to concentrate. So although yoga or om has some validity and it's important, and we find many of the Vedic mantras in this like it says here, om namo bhagavate vasudevaya, or many of the Vedic mantras begin Om Vishnupad Paramahans Pariva Chakatarya Astotara Sattva Sri Sriman Om, what is, the, what is another one? Om Agyan Tamarandasya Ganajana So you'll find there's a lot of Oms mentioned. And all Vedic mantras actually in the Shrutis begin with the, the, the word Om like that. And then we have again in Bhagavad Gita, when you want to execute an activity, you pray for the 
success for that by saying Om Tat Sat. <laughs> Om Tat Sat. And that's mentioned in the Gita. I believe in the 17th chapter describes what is Om Tat Sat. So Om is very common and Hare Krishna is the recommended way in this age. So this is the way for self-realization. So you might even think it's harder to chant Hare Krishna because it's easy to chant one name of Krishna, but when you try to chant the whole mantra concentratedly, then you find the mind, the mind has a tendency to fluctuate or to drift or to go to other subjects like that. And it happens, especially if there's something going on in your life that's your, a concern for you. If there's some concern, as soon as you start chanting Hare Krishna, it immediately comes up <laughs> without fail. Something's bothering you, something went wrong, or something you really want to do, something. If that's the main thing in your consciousness, when you start chanting, it'll come up. Why is that? Because the Hare Krishna mantra is purifying and bringing to the surface all the things that is in our consciousness. And what do you do? You let them go. You don't dwell on them or try to... When you dwell on the subjects, it reinforces it. And then the, the mantra starts to take a more of a back seat. And then you're not chanting, but you're more or less struggling to somehow hear, and you're not really staying there because you're still focusing on that. So one has to be very, I mean, chanting is a struggle. And I've heard other statements, chanting is, is a war with the mind. <laughs> Trying to get that mind to stay fixed on the sound, that's the whole thing, that's the meditation. In kirtan it's a lot easier because of the complete pervasiveness of the sound and because of the volume of the sound also. But we should practice very carefully our japa. Sometimes when I come here for japa peer and I see devotees, are, I can see they're really struggling. I also struggle, but sometimes I see people give up the struggle and just uh, decide to do something else. But that struggle is bhakti. That struggle is bhakti. Whether you're successful in hearing and chanting or whether you're not, it's still bhakti. Because you're trying to serve. And it may not be perfect, but still, don't give it up because by the continuous practice of trying to hear and chant nicely, you will reach that stage. And so you have to continue despite the restless mind or despite whatever difficulties you may be undergoing. But once you catch the mantra, then it's you and the mantra. It's just you and the mantra. There's only, you, there's only two of you. And then you're in the mantra and the mantra's in you. And there's nothing else. Everything else just leaves automatically. So we have to get to that stage of absorption where we can start to hear nicely and when that hearing becomes nice it becomes regular when it becomes regular it becomes more of a meditation and then then uh, uh, and then it becomes more of a concentration then a meditation and then ult ultimate absorption so that is krishna consciousness so we have to practice chanting the hari krishna maha mantra <clears throat> knowing that the success of our chanting is really the success of our progress in devotional service. As Srila Prabhupada would say, 95, 99% Jai Tattva Ki Jai. Beautiful. Hmm. Green record indicates the springtime. Just to divert for a section, a second, I just was thinking of one <clears throat> incident. 
is it is it the outfits that are beautiful or is it the deities that are beautiful? Which one? <laughs> Both? Which one is more beautiful? Well, I'll give you, here's an example. And this was told to me by the devotee who experienced it. He's a, he, he, he started his own preaching center in America. And it's been going on for more than 30 years now. It's actually an official Hare Krishna temple. And so he has deities of Jagannath, Gornitai, and uh, Lord Nishringadev, uh, Lakshmi Nishringadev, and a few other small little deities there. So someone made him an outfit for his deities. So he was looking at it and he's thinking, ah, oh, this outfit's not so nice. I don't think I'm going to use it. <laughs> and then he thought again, eh, since they made it, I'll, I'll put it on once. <laughs> so he did. And him and his wife dressed the deities. And then when he put it on, he was looking, he said, wow, looks really nice. <laughs> so he liked it. <laughs> when, when I was on the deity, it was a whole different experience. <laughs> So yeah. yeah, and so this is, I mean, he's actually a very advanced devotee too, so it's not just some, some bhakta. No, he, so the, 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 hand, the outfits have become enhanced when they're on the Lord, and the Lord apparently becomes enhanced by the outfit. And when you're dressing the deity, you think you're dressing, but you're not. Krishna's telling you, Put this necklace on over here. Get this thing and put it here. Make this over here. Uh, yeah, move this over here. That's it. You're you're kind of like thinking how to do it, but Krishna is telling you at the same time. <laughs> there was one story in Rajpur, in uh, in the Jagannath Temple in Rajpur. You know those deities. Checking up all the days, the big ones, really be powerful deities. So they were dressing Jagannath. So one Pajari was there. So he put one necklace on Jagannath. Then he put a second necklace on Jagannath. Then he put a third necklace on Jagannath. Then he had another one he was going to put it on. So he put it on, the fourth one, but it fell off as soon as he put it on. So he picked it up. And he put, tried to put it on again, and it fell off again. And then he was about to put it on again for the third time, and he heard a voice, Don't you understand? I don't want that. <laughs> Jagannath spoke to him. <laughs> Told him, I don't want it. <laughs> I just, three is enough. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this is a, the Pajari, really, he related that story on what happened. So yeah, the Lord is actually directing how he get, how he wants to look. <laughs> Just like when you dress yourself, nobody tells you how to dress, right? Generally, so nobody tells the Lord how to dress, <laughs> but He tells you how to dress Him. So that's that's bhakti, and that is that's a fact. That's not just some imagination. But he does it for the pleasure of his devotees also. <laughs> so here, again, we have to really practice carefully the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. <clears throat> Sometimes devotees come up with different techniques in order to enhance the quality of their chanting, or enhance the... Uh, we might say the concentration. And those techniques are recommended and bona fide, at least some of them. But real bhakti or real chanting is the bhakti you put into the chanting. The techniques will can ha can assist, but without the bhakti or without the devotion, the, the techniques are just 
exters, external. So chanting with bhakti means to call out for Krishna in a mood of helplessness. Krishna, I'm falling into this material world, I'm struggling. And by your, only by your mercy can you lift me up and save me from this ocean of material existence. So these are some of the moods that we chant in. So that mood is a very important because it also helps bring about concentration like that. And if you want to be effective in your chanting, chant for a long time straight. Don't chant like two, three rounds and then do three, four rounds later and do five, six rounds later. Chant 16 rounds. Sit down and chant 16 rounds. Or if, if you have to walk, that's fine. But chant 16 rounds. Don't break them up. And you'll see there is a qualitative difference in your Krishna consciousness. Significantly. And I'll give you an example. There was one, two devotees in London. Uh, they're brothers. You know Jagannath Sutta? Now, Jagannath, he's a kirtanir. He knows your, your future husband really good. Jagannath, they call him Jaggy. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes he has a little goatee or something. Yeah. Jaggy, okay. So he, he has a brother also. So they both, you know, really wonderful devotees. So he, Jaggy told me, he said, my father... He used to get angry all the time. <laughs> and he would get angry a lot. So we, we told him, you know, you want to get over this anger, chant 16 rounds in the morning without doing anything. So he's a devotee. He's initiated devotee, the father. So he, he did. And after some time, I guess a few weeks, his anger was gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that was a good example of how this sitting and chanting your rounds, it may be a struggle. You may have to get up and walk sometimes just to, you know, get a refreshing on the chanting. But somehow or other, try to do 16 rounds before you do anything. If you have the time, if you have services and it doesn't allow for that time, then do it. And I, I guarantee you, and this is a fact with everybody who's doing your spiritual life will take a quantitative leap forward. You'll see the difference in your spiritual life when you sit down and chant those rounds. Seriously. It's an austerity, but that austerity brings great spiritual merit. And it may be hard. The mind is going this way and that way. But I can tell you also another hint. As soon as you see your mind wandering, bring it back. The more you let your mind wander, the harder it is to bring it back after some time. And the less you allow it to wander, the easier it is to keep concentration. So as soon as you see it going somewhere else, immediately cut it off and bring it back to the sound. And when you do that, you'll find it's become more efficacious or more... Uh, easier to stay focused on the chanting like that. But this is our this is our process. This is everything really situates ourselves on chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And uh, we have to maximize that particular part of the day as the essential part of our day, more than anything else we do. The chanting of our Hare Krishna Maha Mantra will make a big difference in the way we see things, the way we react and act towards things. It'll make a big difference in how we develop relationships with other devotees. It'll help, it'll help enhance the quality of many things that we are trying to develop in our Krishna consciousness. Chanting not only is not just the uh, process of, you know, associating with Krishna through sound vibration, but it's, it's purifying the heart in such a way that everything else we do in Krishna consciousness becomes nice, becomes easier, becomes wonderful, like that. And we have to do kirtan too. We have to do both kirtan 
and Japa, both. Not just Kirtan, not just Japa, but both. Because one supports the other like that. And uh, as the famous Kirtanir in our movement, uh, Ayendra said, he said, uh, Japa is like the medicine in the form of tablets. <laughs> and uh, Kirtan is medicine in form of injections, <laughs> more direct into the vein. <laughs> so both are important. And after a while, when you start practicing more and more of both, you get a real taste for ja Japa. When she developed that taste for japa, then your Krishna consciousness will be faster and more steady. We need to develop that taste. Hmm. Okay, so these some points on Jai Sisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. Some points on Krishna conscious chanting and other points. Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, this is a question from Avadutarai Prabhu, and he is asking, Hare Krishna, some say we should chant attentively, sitting properly. Others quote Lord Chaitanya from Chaitanya Charitamrita 3.20.14, where he says, For chanting Krishna Nama there are no rules regarding time and place. If one chants Krishna Nama even while eating or sleeping, one will attain all perfection. These two options, how to chant, look contradictory. What, what do you think? Well, it's japa meditation. <laughs> it's not just japa. It's, you have to, you know, Prabhupada constantly, over and over, says you have to hear. If you're doing something else, you're also dividing your concentration away from so when Lord Chaitanya says no rules and regulations, he's talking about no, no time, place, and person. Anyone can chant any time in any place. But then again, that's true. And you can also do what Lord Chaitanya said. You can chant while you're eating or you're walking. If you're having a fight with your wife, you can chant in between. <laughs> Makes the fight even nicer. Or your husband. <laughs> but the point is that uh, when it comes to our prescribed rounds, those you have to simply focus on. No driving, no clicker, <laughs> no. Those you have to do in a more in a meditative way and not get as distracted. Prabhupada taught that personally when he was giving japa sessions like that. So, yeah, Lord Chaitanya, what he says is correct. But that means that one can chant any time, any place, anywhere. And, but when it comes to your 16 rounds or your prescribed rounds, that has to be done, and this is the instructions of Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas, in a meditative way, concentrative way. There is one more. There is a local story from Vrindavana that Sanatana Goswami saw Madan Mohan deity playing with the children in Mathura. How to understand that a deity can act like that? Well, there's many stories how the deity talks and walks. We have the story of Shakshi Gopal and how he left Vrindavana and came to Vidyanagar on the request of his the pure devotee. Um, the Alvars in South India, there's many stories where the deities have acted in different ways, moved, turned around, walked, ate the food. So the, the need the deity is none different than the, the Lord. Arche Vishnu Siladi Guru Shu Normati Vaishnava Jati Bhuti. One who sees a deity made out of stone and wood or any kind of material element is seeing with a material consciousness. They're not seeing it. They, their, their consciousness is polluted. So the deity is non-different than the Lord. 
And in certain cases, he may also... Yeah, there's one deity called uh, Bunky Bihari. So Bunky Bihari Temple in Vrindavan, Mangalarti is at 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you, you familiar with that? No? Why? Because the, the story is that when the <clears throat> Pujari was taking care of him many years ago, when he first got installed, when he would go to wake up the deity in the morning, he wasn't there. <laughs> He put him to sleep at night, and he'd come back and he was gone in the morning. And then later on, he would appear, later on. So the deity wanted to stay out late and do his pastimes with his gopis. So he didn't come back so early. So that, because of that, they have Mangal at 10 o'clock. <laughs> still goes on like that. Yeah, so... Uh, Krishna can, he, Prabhupada said he'll talk to you. He said, but he doesn't talk to anybody. <laughs> you have to be qualified to talk to Krishna. But he can, you can talk to Lord Chaitanya or any of the deities here. And if you're qualified, they'll speak, they'll speak back to you. <laughs> so the deity is none different than the Lord. So if he wants to play with some children, or if he wants to eat something off the plate, I mean, I know even personal stories, the devotees that I've been associating with. One very wonderful devotee, she was a pujari for Lord Jagannath in New Vrindavan. She, uh, she was absorbed in Jagannath, and she would take care of him. She would cook for him, and she would make the plates up and put it on the altar. So she told me one time, she was in a hurry, to get the offering. And so she was making everything really fast and made up the plates fast so she could be on time. She started late. And so when she put it on the altar, and she got off, she made the offering, got off, and then she heard crash. And she went back in the deity room. The whole plate was on the floor. <laughs> it was Balaram's plate. <laughs> because uh, Balaram didn't tolerate that. And he, he wanted to make a point that, you know, I don't want this. You know, it wasn't done. So you know, these are, there's so many stories. I can the deity in Rajpur, Jagannath. There is hundreds of stories. The deity walks. The deity talks. The deity, you know, eats the food. He does so many things. It's not like a rare thing. It's it happens regularly, and it's happening even today in our ISKCON society. Mm -hmm. So, don't be surprised. <laughs> Is there any response to that? <laughs> Either one of those response, any response to any of my answers? No? Okay, yeah, so deity is Krishna. Anything else? On the other comments in Krishna. So those of you who are pujaris or cooks, if, you, if you're in a hurry, be, make sure you do everything nicely, even if you're in a hurry. Because if you don't, Krishna won't accept it. And sometimes he lets you know. <laughs> so yeah, he doesn't have to take your offering. He may or may not, that's up to him. So, we should do everything very, very nicely when it comes to the deities. Carefully, with a great attention. So we can see, every, whoever dressed today was very, very, very attentive in putting, making the deities look so nice. And the altar looks so nice also. That's bhakti. <laughs> Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs>